Hello and welcome to Motive Garage where we continue the development of our R32 GTR project budget supercar. It's time for part two of our RB26 budget build. Now in our last episode you would have seen that we were originally going to continue our stock bottom end development but put a big head on it. But we ended up changing our mind, going back to the stock head and then we found out that that stock engine we bought actually had forged pistons in it. Now with only 48 hours to go before GDR Festival we had to make the decision on what to do so we decided to put some rods in it. Now with that engine we didn't actually have to pull it apart completely or take it to the machine shop so we actually saved a lot of money which we could put towards new rods, rod bolts and main studs and we could turn this development into a budget friendly RB26 build. So what's the new goal? Well thousand horsepower and low nines on a medium frame turbo while still being a fun, responsive, reliable and drivable street car. We want to do all this with a budget friendly RB26 build. Well, as budget as an RB26 can be. Now it's a big ask but we know we can do it. First up, let's choose some rods. It's a funny situation, funny moment. Oh, it's all looks stockish. So uh, the boys here at CRD decided to pull it apart and they've called me Come and have a look at this, like what? Uh, when do we call Andrew? What do you mean? Come and have a look. Oh, it's got forges in it. Oh, well, that's good and bad. All right, how do we get around it? Okay, well, can we put stock pistons? Is the stock bore still measured it? Nah, okay, well, we're stuck. All right, what do we do? Oh, well, let's make it a good situation out of a bad one. Let's add rods to it. At least then we can go to town with this motor. Oh, so I know what brand of piston it is, so I know what sort of power it's capable of. So we matched up a set of rods to suit that particular piston. There's no use spending money for an I-beam if that piston is not capable of handling what the I-beam can handle. So it was uh, quite a bit of a chuckle when we had to ring you up and tell you and you've gone, so what do I do? It's one of those dumb things that happened by mistake. You know, like who was to know? You know, you bought what you thought was a stocky engine we always thought it was a stocky motor until it got pulled apart to be clean to get ready to go for, for the GDR festival. Anyway, the boys did a great job of getting it going, obviously, at uh, CRD. Primary reasons for me keeping your rev limiter to a very safe level. One, oil pump. Two, factory rod bolts. Not the rods, the rod bolts. Now, people are going to say, well, okay, well, why don't you change the rod bolts? Okay, it's not as easy as that. How do they rack rod bolts? It's not so much even a power thing, it's more an RPM thing. Keeping your rev limiter stock, uh, the power level we were, at, we were at, was okay. Um, and we were quite happy with that. And we were actually happy to go a bit more power. I had no issue in turning, uh, turning the wick up a little bit more. But since we found pistons in your engine, since it was in decent condition, it just needed a clean up. Um, and we've gone, well, we might as well put some, um, some H-beams in it, which are extremely strong rod, and they're more a street sort of mid-performance type rod. At least that way we can now rev it safely to whatever RPM we want, and the only holdup really is the, the, whatever we do to the head. And uh, we're not running any risk of stretching rod bolts, uh, which then causes bearings to move in the, in the big end, which then causes bearings to spin ultimately, and then it's a tumbling effect from there. Uh, obviously our, all our rods come with um, a minimum of ARP 2000 rod bolts. One thing that we know with the standard uh, main girdle and the standard bolts is you get to a certain power level and we've seen it before and again doing the RBs for so many years, you pull the motor apart and you'll see between the two mating surfaces of the block and the, um, and the main girdle what we call fretting. Um, and fretting is the studs that have bolts that have actually stretched a little bit and allowed the cradle to move in the block. So again to minimise that happening, so uh, yeah 600 plus kilowatts not a problem, maybe we'll, um, I think my thing was to get yours up to about 700 or something we thought at one stage, at least 650 if we, which is pretty pretty reasonable I think, pretty and easy to do. do oh yeah, yeah there's no issues with that. The crankshaft's actually been proven now that it can do more than that. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to live forever, the crank it'll eventually twist, it won't break. Yeah, it, it, you'll give it a good run for a while. Unfortunately, we missed out on filming the actual engine assembly, but Con from CRD managed to get it done in a night. Pretty impressive. So here is the specs on the new engine. Second-hand forged pistons, Nitto H-beam con rods and ARP 2000 rod bolts. There's ARP main studs, the Nitto Performance Engineering oil pump and the CRD spec enlarged and baffled sump. 
There's also a Nitto oil gallery restrictor in the block. There's the Nitto metal head gasket, Tomo head studs, the stock head, which was machined flat but still uses stock ports and valves, but there's Supertech single valve springs, Tome Type B Pond Cams, and OS Geek and adjustable cam gears. We also installed a new water pump and thermostat, along with a new timing belt kit. And we also used a complete Nitto gasket kit when reassembling the engine. This is about as simple as it gets when it comes to a forge rebuild. Many would be going for a ported and rebuilt head right about now, but we wanted to see what we could do with the stocker first. Another modification we made while the engine was out was the fitment of a Quaif helical front LSD. This will help with traction as the factory front diff is open, and it also reduces torque steer, which is great on a high-powered GTR as they can be a bit of a handful. With the engine together on Wednesday night at midnight before GTR Festival, we now had 36 hours to get it in the car and get it running. We arrived at CRD Thursday morning and with the help of our buddy Mechanical Stig and the boys from CRD, the plan was to get the whole car back together and running the same day. Not easy, but certainly doable. Most of the car went back together as per before, but we had to replace new fittings and put new gaskets. And the only changes really were the JHH racing oil distribution block and the removal of some water lines to tidy up under the inlet manifold. We made sure to use Nitto intake gaskets for better durability. By the time the sun went down, the engine was ready to go into the car and be mated up to the clutch and gearbox. Once the engine went in, it was all hands on deck at CRD to get some of the new wiring done and get the final pieces of the car together and turn key. With the engine primed, fluids in, it was time for the first start. The car started first go, so we checked over everything and made sure the car was all good, ready for the dyno. We packed it up for the night and returned Friday afternoon to put the car onto the CRD dyno. Con, I heard you need to make a call, mate. You make a phone call? Do I? Yeah, who, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> and then? And we're going to call, pack and send? Because we're going to send this thing. With the pistons being second hand and already in the engine, we didn't need to bed the rings in. So, we could pretty much get straight into power runs. Just in case. After a couple of tweaks and dyno pulls, the car ripped out a staggering 491 kilowatts or 658 wheel horsepower on wastegate pressure of 23.5 psi. This is more than 30 kilowatts more than it used to make on wastegate pressure, showing that a healthier engine certainly makes more power. It was then time to up the boost. Traction became an issue, so luckily we had a couple of mates to sit in the back. <laughs>
we got up to 559 kilowatts or 750 wheel horsepower, which is 20 or so more than before. And then we decided to remove the air filter to see if it made any difference. And it certainly did. Just another day, eh? Just another day. Okay, did you think it would make that power and what does it need to make more? Are we out of turbo? I'm actually disappointed. I'll be honest with you. I wanted to make, well, I thought I'd get 600 at least. But Do you think it's rehousing time? Yeah, it's, a, it's the turbo. So, I mean, it's just maxing out. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'd have liked to get more than that. I'm, I'm a bit peed, I'll be honest with you. So. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. So, next one on the dyno. Hi, Jordan. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Well, there you have it, 785 wheel horsepower, which on a Dynodynamics dyno is a calculated engine horsepower of 950, which means we're very close to that magic thousand mark that we're aiming for on this combo. Now, we think that's pretty impressive for such a basic engine setup, such a simple bottom end and a basic head setup. It proves that you don't need to spend a monster to have a powerful, responsive, drivable and fun GTR. Now, we've maxed out the GTW 388467 mil, so our next step is to try a larger rear housing. We'll probably go with a 115 first to try and crack that magic 1,000 horsepower mark. And failing that, yeah, it's nothing a bit of nitrous can't fix. Now, we did have the car running in time for the GTR Festival, but unfortunately, we didn't finish getting the car teched in time. And because we've gone sub tens at over 140 mile an hour, we were banned from running again until we were teched. But we did get to run the car at Powerplay Sydney, and if you watched our latest vlog, you got to see just how fast and fun the car really is. In fact, it'll spin first and second on a roll-on on street tyres, so uh, drag radials really are required on that sort of power level. Now, in our next episode, we're going to be talking with IHRA and Motorsport Connections to show you guys how to get your car teched to run sub-10s, and obviously, once we've finished doing that, it's back to the track with our aim of low nines. Stay tuned.